So Charlotte Rusta is our next uh, presenter and she's married to Trigua. Um, her work is purely based on drawings and text and something that they, these two have collaborated on is called Rake Visningsrum. And um, the building is, you know, based on like reused materials and this is something that they worked on from uh, 2011 till 2019 and then they moved it from Trondheim, which it was uh, firstly done, to Oslo. Is this correct? No? <laughs> yeah, okay, let's, you can explain it. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Ja, Trygve, jeg må ha fenger og trykke litt. <laughs> okay, so, um, I'm Charlotte, <laughs> and I am an artist doing drawing and text. But I've also been uh, collaborating with uh, Trygve since 2010, which is basically the year we met, I think, on our first date, I guess. <laughs> we started talking about doing something. We wanted to do a project. Uh, we didn't really know what, but we wanted to do something. And um, it kind of ended up being uh, kind of... The idea came from me ending my master's in Trondheim that year, and Trygve was still an architect student. So my idea had always been to move or escape Trondheim, uh, but it made kind of made sense since we were going to stay there to, to do something to contribute to the, to the scene in Trondheim, which is very different in 2011 than it is now. So in 2011 you had the TSSK, or the Trondelag Center for Samtidskunst, which was doing a, a really good job. I think they had a lot of struggles with old ideas, but they were doing, they were there, they were doing the job. And then you had Babel, which was uh, connected to Alkove, which probably most of you know, but Lademon Kunstnerwerkstedt. And they were very connected to the um, uh, artist residency program. So they were also doing a very specific job, but doing the job. And then you had um, an artist run, no, um, student run space called Blunk. So these were kind of the institutions that was there. You had the museum, but they had been very like, introverted, you could kind of say, for, for lots of years. So we felt and had been saying for years that nothing happens in Trondheim. It's a dead city, you can't stay here. So when we decided to stay, we kind of naively <laughs> were thinking, okay, if we're going to do it, we have to do it ourselves. So we ended on like having, wanting to do a project and then wanting to do an uh, exhibition space. Uh, and Trygve was a Architect student. Um, I kind of jump over some parts because some have mentioned Rake Arbetsfellesskap also to me, which is a studio space uh, which we started at the st same time. So we kind of started Rake in 2011, and at the same time we uh, got news of this huge uh, space at Saklamon, which was available. And we kind of jumped on that. We, we knew of a couple of people who needed a studio, so we, at the same time starting the, this space, we also started the studio space. And in this like, very early days, we didn't really know what we were doing. We were thinking that having one organization would be better than having two. So we ended up calling both Rake. But they were never actually one project. They were really two with separate economies and separate uh, systems and working. So Rake Visningsrum has always been me and Trygve, whilst Rake Arbetsfellesskap is a studio space which have its own board and changing. But I'm going to focus on Rake Visningsrum and especially kind of projects that we did uh, perhaps outside the space or in public space. But yeah, so we started like naively just wanting to do something. And as Trigger was a student still, he knew about this workshop 
which was called Trästycker, which was kind of based on the idea that the three architect schools, Oslo, Bergen, and Trondheim, kind of came together and did a project in wood. So tre sticker, wood, and three <laughs> combined. Uh, so we kind of um, uh, reincarnated, yeah, <laughs> or like pushing, <laughs> pushing to life. It, it had been going on for a few years, but it had been a long, uh, a few years where nothing had happened. So we kind of lent, I guess, the idea of this workshop. Um, and kind of started to do this design and build workshop where we first invited a few students together with Trigve who were kind of the organizers of the workshop. And then I was kind of a, a big herre, I guess, and a veileder <laughs> um, for like, what do we want this to be? So I had this kind of role of being someone uh, that was going to own the project in the workshop, and Trigve and the other students had a was kind of the organizational part of the. Would you say that correct? It's been a long time since we've been talking about this. Yeah. So this is where it was first uh, placed. We didn't have any money, <laughs> kind of, of course. Uh, so we were starting to think like, what kind of other resources do we have, except for money. So, of course, the, the Trestica workshop would have uh, people, like manpower. Um, so, that we, we knew that we could do something, like build something, but then also, like, for materials, what can we do? So, the, and also, yeah, of course, the land. We find the land first, and we manage to get this plot, uh, which is, you see the small house there, that was torn down, and then we had the plot in front of this Jugend style building. Um, yeah, so we had the, the land for two years from the municipality for free, uh, and then we were thinking about materials. So this is an office building, which were like 400 meters up the street from, from the plot, which we knew were going to be demolished. So we uh, contacted Entra Eindom, which uh, owned it, uh, to figure out if there was something we could use from this building to, to build. So the kind of the reuse, reclaim idea came mainly because of like financial thinking or like how can we do something more perhaps than environment at the time. I, that was a perk and a, it was nice kind of, but it came from something else also. Um, and in the, it's like a 16-story office building, so windows, you can see there's a lot of them. And inside there was, especially in the like, ground floor, had like this really beautiful cantina. So there was a lot of materials that we saw that this is actually possible to use. And then, of course, uh, the, the workers. <laughs> so we... I think it was built in 12 days or something, the, the house. Uh, it was designed in the Easter break and then built during the summer of 2011. So this is the inside. So on the outside, it's kind of strange, small building. And on the inside, it's more like a white cube kind of thing. Even though you have the strange floor and the strange ceiling, it's quite a concentrated space. So the idea was to do this for two years and then escape. <laughs> so the idea to escape Trondheim is always there, was always there in the beginning. So we're going to have a very like regular programming. Um, the main idea was to get people to come to Trondheim, to get uh, like uh, competence, I guess, competence to the city. Because that was, we, we felt was lacking was this like energy of new people. So we had the idea to, to, to run it for two years and have a very high activity uh, based in the space. So we did that, just like, and, and it was also, I don't know if I mentioned, but it was also this idea of having an art and architecture, like, symbiose, <laughs> I guess. 
And also since we've been building it with architect students, we also had this like, from the beginning, a strong core of architect students knowing about the project and also then coming to the like, more regular exhibitions. Um, but quite kind of quickly, we felt that we wanted to expand, I guess. So in 2012, we, um, we left the running of the space to a colleague, Marit Roland, who uh, ran it for half a year, while we were traveling through Europe with this car, uh, which was a, just a project we did. It didn't really have to do with Rake, but we wanted to do something. So we, we worked with schools around Europe. Um, and on that trip, we really had time to kind of think about what we'd done for the last years and what's next. So this is kind of the first project, like out from that, the trip, we came up with the idea that, okay, we have this car, it's a resource, we're all, always talking about resources, we, it's a resource that we have, how can we share it? So we decided to have a residency program when we came back. And that's the first time we kind of see that we can use Rake outside the space. We can kind of try to, to um, yeah, escape <laughs> again. Yeah, so that was a kind of just a fun thing. It was this residency program. I think we had two artists using it before the car broke down. Uh, but it, it kind of worked. And then there was a curating of a bookshelf in the car. Uh, this is while it's growing. You could kind of rent the car and use it as a library. So we would like put the car in a free spot somewhere in the town and you can have the keys and you can go there and, and read for a day. That was the, so it was very like low key, this first going out of the box, I guess. But then when we came back from this trip, we um, got a notice that our neighbors in the, like the yellow Jugend, I guess I have a picture, in this building. So Rock is over there. And the people were thrown out. There's been people living there for 40 years with a monthly contract. Um, and the municipality had kind of, it's, it's regulated as a road, the, the plot and also this building. And it was always supposed to be torn down, but it, it kind of, it took 40 years before they threw them out. So in the, in the fourth floor, I guess, there was a, 80-year-old woman living, uh, just being thrown out in a month notice. So when we came back, we're gonna, they're, they're gone. So we were like, okay, we, we have to use this in some way. We want to use the building. So it's a, it's a double. We, we just want to do something, of course, again. But also, we want to, um, I think we, we kind of framed it as we want to celebrate the death of, or give this a, 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 a <laughs> I think we used the, a worthy death, yeah. So we wanted to do, to do a project um, that was kind of this social project, but also focusing on the lousy conditions we were seeing these people living in. And we were actually able to then to, it was Staten Sveivesen who bought it to, to tear it down. And uh, we kind of convinced them to, to lend it to us for a month in, in September that year. So we came back in January and we had to do a project in the fall. So it was quite a narrow or a small frame of, of um, yeah, getting financial support and finding the artist. And, but we just, it had this energy, it just needs to be done in a way. So we kind of call, we talked about it as an indoor park. Like we one of the things we find lacking in Norway is kind of the winter. Where do you go in the winter if you don't have a space in your home, kind of? You can go to cafes, of course, but then you have to pay. So there's no like free spaces in wintertime in Norway. We could, could of course, go skiing and all those things, but it's something else still. So we wanted to make an indoor park with lots of energy for a month. Um, and this is also the first project that we're doing where the architects are kind of allowed to be architects. They're doing architectural projects uh, which are connected to the art project, but they're not trying 
to be artists in a way in a, in a white cube space. So this is the first time we really kind of saw that this uh, symbiosis kind of thing could work. So they made, um, I'm sorry I'm not mentioning names on this project because there were so many and it kind of just uh, threw, yeah, on the speech the day we opened, it was like we started to thank a few people and then we just realized we, there's so many people. <laughs> but the architects, maybe you can help me, who, I can't remember, the Architekturfabriken, yeah. So we invited Architekturfabriken to, um, to kind of make a new entrance in the back. Because you see from, from this picture, it's just cars going, it's a very narrow sidewalk. And it's not a very cozy place to be. So we wanted a new entrance. So they made, of course, a, a fireplace kind of thing. Uh, the mirror that you see is part of a work. There's a peeping hole through one of the apartments and you can see into the, in the back. But a new entrance into the building. And then also more like a, a living room or an open house or a something inside with a, a fireplace, of course, it needs to have sit around the fireplace. And I think we were 40 artists and architects, like, at the end, doing projects. And we started on the opening day. We kind of had most of the exhibitions ready. Um, but we wanted to, we wanted to hide this, have, have this high activity thing so that people would come back. So you, you don't just go to the opening, but you want to come back and experience the, the house and the project, basically, several times. So we had a core kind of exhibition uh, in, the, in the beginning, and then we had a new opening each weekend uh, during the period. Lots of performative works for the opening, um, but we also had this trying to open up so we could have like town meetings. Uh, if someone got an idea during the period, they could come to us, like just have a concert, have a reading, kind of do whatever was the, the idea. Um, one of the spaces on the ground floor was an uh, old um, storefront, and we made that into a kind of separate artist-run space which was called Här kommer ingenting, or Here Comes Nothing, um, where we invited artist students uh, to have one exhibition uh, each weekend. So that was also a way to kind of come in contact with uh, art students again uh, and, and uh, have them work together with us. That's, we were, when we started, we were kind of wanting to be connected to the professional scene, so we didn't really collaborate with the students in the beginning, but this kind of, here it really made sense, and it also changed the way we were thinking afterwards, I guess. Um, so again, we had, a very, we had six months of planning, so you don't really, uh, I think it's a bit different now, perhaps, but it was very hard to get funding in so that short amount of time. So again, we had to ask, okay, we can't really pay the artist. We can have a budget for, for doing things, but we don't really have a fee. Uh, no, a fee? Is that a honorar? Yeah. Um, but we, could, we had money for productions, and we kind of, uh, if you had a project that cost 20,000, you'd we try to give you 20,000, 20, and if you had 5,000, you would find five. So it was more like trying just to do the projects than a fair, oh, it was fair, but fair in a different way, I guess. Um, and, and the other thing was that we had this house that was going to be demolished, so you could really do things that you couldn't do in a normal gallery setting, which was kind of one of the resources that we could have. So here, uh, Karianne Stensland made a hole in the ceiling, and it was like this hourglass kind of thing, uh, sand was, was uh, coming down during, I can't remember, did, did we kind of take it up and we changed it? Oh my God, yeah, we did. Of course we did. <laughs> um, and she also had a performance uh, in the space. Um, 
And then, kind of in the middle of the period, like halfway, uh, Per Christian Nygård made this project, which is called Hagen. So you would come up in the third or fourth floor, and you would kind of enter this, this baroque. Was it baroque? Is this a baroque garden? Yeah. Uh, and it was super strange. It would really, we knew what was coming, but for us as well, it was like very um, accessible, I guess. Um, and it really changed the project because this was the, like, we, we got, really got the press involved now. I think Hagen was uh, nytt på nytt. It was this strange. So suddenly there was this, this uh, people knew about the project. And then it kind of turned into this, um, Bevar, uh, keep, like, Bevar? But yeah. Bevar Elgesetter, and I, Jugen Gorn. Yeah, so it kind of changed, and more meetings were held, and uh, with more discussion of how can we save it in a way, which was really nice. This is a way that we've been working a lot, both before and after, like trying to make a framework or a a set of ingredients, and then just see how does it work, what happens, and yeah. Um, and just also an example of, of things that you could do in this space that you couldn't really do in a regular gallery. It's hard to destroy a wall which is supposed to be fixed after. Then you destroy it in a very different way than when you destroy it, and you don't have to think about the consequences of it. And uh, also the art militia having a uh, cannon, paint cannon performance. Uh, so they were actually shooting paint bullets, I guess, <laughs> during, uh, through, through the house. And I don't think we really thought that we were going to save it. That wasn't our plan. I mean, we were destroying the house, so we didn't really think it was going to be saved. But it actually it's still standing, uh, and it burned a few years ago now, and it, it's become this very like verkbyll uh, for for the municipality, and and uh, I'm very curious about what will happen. But it, but it ended up like opening up a discussion that we didn't really participate much in, but it, other people were starting to grab the discussion through this project, which was fun to, to be a part of. And this Jordi Colomer project is a very different project because this is like the total difference in, in the finances. I think for this project we ended up having the same budget that we had for the three years in Raqqa before this. So it was this like super strange change. Jordi Colomer is a Spanish artist um, that was actually a Sp Spain's Venice uh, artist a few years after this, or the same year, something. So it was kind of strange that he came to this uh, small space in Trondheim, but it was really fun. <laughs> so we started this discussion with him. He was like this, the, the small house, he was so happy with a low budget. He was thinking, I can do something else and I'm I can do some paintings, or I can explore. Um, when we met him then in 2012, I think. And this is in 2014. So in the two years, it changed from being this tiny, tiny project to be a very big one. So this is a garage. Um, oh, yeah, I've talked a very long time. Uh, this is a garage that was also very, going to be demolished. Um, but. We, both me and Trigvas kind of fell in love with this building. Uh, we went past it every day. Uh, and we started like spinning on the idea of doing something with it. And it, it's like a cathedral for cars. It's like, it's amazing light inside. Okay, I tried to skip a bit through this, but the, the main thing is that we, uh, for four, year, four weeks, uh, Jordi came, he planned, and made three films, and then we did the exhibition. Um, and it was in the car park for a month, I think, the exhibition. And on this project, we got Kuro to support because uh, Trondheim Kommune um, came in as a partner. Um, 
they kind of saw that this could be like a art in public space project that they could be partner in, and so they actually owns one of the films that was made. So suddenly we had this, like, a proper, we could pay the artist well, we could pay uh, the people filming and the sound people, and there was a lot of people of, uh, involved also who was just kind of wanting to be there as extras for the films, which opened up for the community to, like, we, we met people that wouldn't re normally go to, to art shows because it was a very big, production. Um, yeah, so this is a kind of turning point that we understand that... Uh, I'm sorry, I have to ask, when did we actually start? Because now I feel a bit... Am I supposed to be done at two? No, I can, I can go on a bit more. Yeah. Um, it was a turning point where we like kind of, okay, if we're going to continue with Rake, we need to be able to pay the artist. And maybe ourselves also like later on. <laughs> so up to, until that point, with the idea was always that the artist will at least go in null, kind of, yeah, don't have to pay to do the exhibition, but we can't really pay them. Um, so when we decided that we were finished with Alges Atagata, uh, that we'd done the projects that we wanted to do there, but we wanted to continue, we moved the space. Um, this is at the same time as we did the Jordi project, actually. It's Jordi standing in the middle there, taking a photo. So we moved the space from the south, and then up, you can see the red spot, in the harbor area of Trondheim. So there was like, kind of, okay, we, wanted, we still had ideas for Rake, we still had projects we wanted to do, but we, were, we wanted also to be in a area where there would actually be people just stopping by. In Elgis Adegata, you had to kind of have, you had to know the place, you had to kind of be invited almost. But here, there were people just walking around. Uh, so we were thinking that maybe we can have a bigger, kind of reaching people who is not, who don't think they're interested in art also. Um, so, we ended up here, did a project with Sandman and Hod, like Klum. <laughs> they were doing the kind of the, the garden because the social part had always been very important for us to have this space outside because it's a small space inside. So having a place where we can actually have a meeting point for the different groups that will kind of join and, and come. Um, yeah. So we did this, like, did this larger projects um, outside the space, and then in, I don't remember which year, but then we did the, the collaborative curating project. We were kind of seeing now, as I said in the beginning, we were focusing on getting people to Trondheim. But then, uh, as the art scene evolved, because the, the art museum really, what, with this, the new director, Pontus Gjander, it really changed. Uh, Kunsthallen were not so much just a thought anymore, it was starting to be developed, it was actually going to, to be something. And, and a lot of things were happening, so we kind of saw that we could take another role than we had before. So we were starting to, to talk about more the local art scene, the local artists, but also how to reach, because we'd all been, always just been like curating on the, like we saw something we liked and then we asked, <laughs> do you want to do something with us? But now we, we wanted to reach out uh, broader in a way. So the, the kind of naive idea, I guess, was that we always found that when we had friends, artist friends, they would always know a great artist who also was great to work with, because that's kind of nice when you're having a, <laughs> a space. Uh, so the idea was to, to invite artists to, uh, to um, co-curate or to... Yeah, the idea was to, to, to figure out if artists were uh, villi, willing, thank you, willing to, to lift a colleague, like, 
because it's a hard process. All the applications doing all the, the work all the time. Are you willing to do that for, for another artist? So that was kind of the idea. And at this point, we also had, now we started to have money in a sense where we could actually pay both of them, both the co-curator and the artist. So it was this different, but it, yeah, so in 11 or 12 months, we had uh, 12 exhibitions. Um, so that was kind of just an, another way of, of curating and, and kind of trying to figure out how, who can we be? That was always kind of the questions, like what is Rake and what is, uh, where is our place in this local scene? What can we be and what do we want to be? So this was one of the answers, I guess, for... And Geronimo Hagamon was kind of the first project that on Brattera started to, to use the, the outside space. He made this, um, these wires with um, humle, uh, hop, hop, right? And, and so the, the hop plant are able to grow like seven to nine meters during the summer. So there, it was really like changing during the exhibition, it kind of grew. So you, every time you passed, you will kind of, if you noticed it, you will see that it was changing. And it, there was also this project outside, which is called Smell Beds, where yeah, you could basically lay down and smell herbs. Uh, and that was open like all the time. You could go there by night, you could be there whenever you wanted. So that kind of got its own life on, on Instagram because people were kind of doing pictures and so it was nice to see that the space also had this opportunity to be alive even though it was closed. Yeah, and the, so the social part has always been, been very important, even though we couldn't really pay, especially in the beginning, we couldn't really pay. So how could we kind of contribute to making a, a good environment, both for the exhibiting artist and also for the community? So the social part, having the parties, and having dinners and doing all that stuff was very important. So this is from the, the five-year anniversary. And in the bottles, it's beer made from the hop of uh, Hagemann's project. So that was a... <laughs> yeah, and the fireplace always been very important to be like somewhere we can hang and, and just uh, talk to each other, I guess. And then we did the last uh, move. It's kind of, uh, it's, a, it's, it's possible to move it, but it's not really mobile. So it's, we can do it, we could do it, but um, it, it takes some uh, effort, <laughs> of course. So the last move was just a few hundred meters, but then really on the edge of the, of the harbor. It's actually a one meter outside the, so it's, kind of on the edge. And it was very interesting to see just the move from like one part of the harbor to another, how many of the artists actually then started to work with ocean as material. Like, like Ellen Sophia Griegel is pumping water from the fjord. Uh, it's go up in the thing on, on, the, on the roof and, and then out again. And she was trying to Think about if water has memory, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm always looking at Trigve to, to know that I'm saying the right things. Um, but moving there, um, starting to, I guess we're on the, the edge of our um, financial, we had some support from both uh, Trondheim Kommune, like a three-year um, project uh, thing. I don't really remember the, the fund. Usually we had to apply every semester uh, and you could have uh, 30,000 or 70,000, but never anything big, so it's hard to plan. But we got this three-year grant kind of thing. Uh, and then we also get a three-year uh, thing from Kulturrådet. So we had this, we knew that we had three years. So we were kind of trying to understand what we, would we do after, I guess, we're trying to, s to discuss 
What's the, how can this continue, or should it continue? Or? And then with the project with Jakob Kutz-Stensen, Kut uh, which was also the Metamorph project that year, we really understood that we were starting to be more interested and more involved in the exhibitions that took longer. Because uh, the project with Jakob was really one year of, of talking and really getting into the ideas and really getting to know the artist it was just different from like an artist coming and you do the work and they, they leave and it's, it's over and then you start over again. So we started to realize that we need something that, like the longer processes. So this was also this, one of these like turning points, um, which led us to uh, say, I guess, enough is enough. <laughs> we want to end the project uh, like properly. We don't want to just wither, wither away. We want to go out with a, with a bang, <laughs> in a way. So, so I think actually from the beginning, when we started to realize that we were going to continue longer than two years, this was always part of the conversation, like how to end it, when to end it, why to continue. But so we decided that the summer of 2019 would be the, the last show. And like really going from just inviting other artists to coming to Trondheim, I'm seeing now that there's so much things happening this is so, it's a really good city for art now. Uh, we really wanted to focus on the local scene and we wanted to focus on kind of site and space. So we invited uh, Jakob Jessen, Edwina Larsen, Elin Mar Einvister and Magdalena Mandelova. And Elin Mar is the only one who wasn't local. They had been studying in Trondheim but now lived at Röst. But Elin Mar does these projects where, where they um, kind of go into really the, the ground of things, like really, um, yeah. Now I'm, I'm spinning off, but the only uh, non-local artist. So Jakob was, uh, um, or is a professor at the Art Academy. Edwine had just ended her PhD and Magdalena, I think, was graduating that year. Um, so it kind of become this celebration of, of the site and of the years that we've been working there. So Jakob made the space uh, spin. It kind of uh, it, it rotated uh, during the exhibition hours, opening hours. Um, so it was this... Uh, big machine inside. We lifted it up on wheels <laughs> and it was turning. And there was also a performative kind of project within where local artists were talking about uh, the art scene in some way. They could choose how to do it, but they were kind of the, the guides or the host bringing people in and talking through the duration of the, of the spin. Yeah, here's the inside. And then uh, Edwina was kind of trying to push what is uh, uh, public space. So we ended up getting a, a spread in a newspaper, in Magazine, where she was having a project uh, every week for 12 weeks during the summer. So the project was kind of evolving inside Magazine. We also kind of exhibited the Magazine down at the harbor, but it was mainly like in the actual uh, newspaper. And then Magdalena had this, uh, she had kind of uh, tracked the, uh, ah, this is hard. She had <laughs> she'd, uh, recorded the sounds on the, on the like, area of uh, Bratöra, and then um, you would kind of move around, and when you moved around, a GPS signal will change the sound, so you're kind of connected very much to the sound where you're at. Yeah, so it's very like trying to figure out the space around it. And then after, it's it's true that we uh, that we tore the rakje; it was demolished, uh, but we didn't really bring the space to Onneby, even though a lot of the materials is now a sauna where we live. 
uh, the, most of the materials that we could uh, salvage, we brought with us to our new land. <laughs> and all the windows were given away. I don't think we had to throw away any of the windows. Everyone, like, um, there's a lot of um, greenhouses in the Trondheim area, which has windows from, from the space. Yeah, so that's kind of Rake, and me and Trygve is now uh, developing a new project, which is called Dialogen, which is at Slettelöka in Oslo. So we kind of had this break now for four years where we haven't really been working with other artists, or at least I, you have, you have been working with some. Uh, but starting up a new project, would, of course, we'll use a lot of the knowledge we have from this project to try to understand and it, which is very connected to what we've been talking about today, so it's interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions, perhaps, or comments? Or Thank you. <laughs> I really experienced the time in Trondheim. It was very sharing. We felt that we could, uh, after Pontus came to the museum, we, we really could uh, collaborate, with, collaborate between the institutions. And it was a very good, I hope the, that energy is still in, in Trondheim. <laughs>